Hey, Musso here. Let's do a uh, motion graph example problem. You got the problem over here. If you can't see it very well, I'm going to read it out loud anyhow. I've got the graph set up. It's a velocity time graph. Uh, so we've got this velocity time graph for a world-class track sprinter in a 100-meter race. And we want to know the average velocity for the first four seconds. We Then we want to know the instantaneous velocity at the t equals five seconds, so at that one instant. What is the average acceleration between 0 and 4 seconds? What is the displacement from 2 to 4 seconds? And then finally, what is the total displacement? My work's going to be all over the place. I might not have enough room for everything, so I might have to erase some. Uh, try to write this stuff down as you go as well. That way, if I do erase, you can still refer back to it. So here we go. Why, we want to know the average velocity during the first 4 seconds. So during this 4 seconds, what is the average velocity? This is not anything to do with the graph as much as the other problems per se. I mean, you need to look at the graph to figure out some values, but this is just going to be straight up average velocity is the sum of each velocity divided by the total velocities. And we could do this because we know that they're experiencing a constant uniform accelerated motion. And so we can use one of our kinematic equations. And we know that the velocity in the beginning has got to be zero. And we know the velocity at the end of that four seconds is 12 meters per second. So we're just going to come over here and look at the 12. So we're not calculating slope or area or anything like that. So my average velocity is going to be 0 plus 12 meters per second divided by 2. I'm going to find out that I have an average velocity of 6 meters per second during the first four seconds. Cool. B. What is the instantaneous velocity at the fifth second? So for that, we just got to look at our graph because this is a velocity time graph. All we got to do is find where the line is at five seconds and just come on over here to the graph to see that at, at the fifth second, the velocity is 12 meters per second. So these first two, I'm going to call this V5 because it's the fifth second. You don't have to, it just makes sense. The first two aren't utilizing anything new or groundbreaking in terms of analyzing graphs it's just simply looking at the timeline or the data line uh, C is where it starts to change a little bit I wouldn't call it making it any difficult per se just different and we want to know the acceleration between 0 and 4 seconds for that we got to recognize how to find acceleration on a velocity time graph remember the first thing you do is identify well what does slope represent the second thing you do is identify what does the area represent so in this case we're talking about the slope of this line uh, from 0 to 4 seconds. And the slope of anything is going to be the change in the y variable, so the change in v or the change in the x variable, which is the change in time. So for c, this is a fancy way of saying what is the slope of the graph, because change in velocity over change in time is acceleration. So c just says slope. So it'll be change in v over change in t. We know the change in V from 0 to 4 seconds. It's going to be, um, well, we're going from 0 to 12 meters per second. So 12 minus 0 is 12 meters per second. You should write that in, though. So 12 meters per second minus 0 all over that change in time, which will be 4 seconds minus 0. It all began at 0. So we're looking at 12 divided by 4. We're going to get 3 meters per second squared for my acceleration between 0 and 4 seconds. Cool. D, what is the displacement from 2 to 4 seconds? This is a little tricky because it's not including this beginning portion or the end portion. We're looking at how far do they travel just between 2 and 4 seconds. Remember, the area under a slope for a velocity time graph is displacement. So for that, we're going to figure out the area between the second and fourth second, this segment right here. we got to find this area. And I see two very clear shapes here. I see this triangle up here and this rectangle down here. So I'm going to find the area of each of these and then just add them together. I'll do my work for D right up top here. I'm going to first find this triangle and then I'll find this rectangle. I don't care what you do, which one you do first. So the triangle, I'm going to do one half base times height. Well, the base is two to four, so two and the height Looks like I'm going from 6 to 12. So it's going to be 1 half of 2. And then the height 6 to 12 is 6, right? So 1 half of 2 times 6. That's going to be 6 meters. 
I've got to add that to the displacement for this rectangle, which is simply going to be 2 times 6. So that's, what, 12 meters? Looks like I'm getting a displacement of 18 meters for this segment. Pretty straightforward stuff. All right. And then E. What is the total displacement? I'm going to do that work down here. Total displacement, we need to add this displacement here, but we also need to account for this additional displacement and then this whole region here. It's all in the positive region of the graph, so we simply just add it all up. So E is going to be 18 meters, which is this segment that we already calculated, plus this triangle, one half of base times height. The base is 2, the height is 6. So that's going to be 6 meters, right? Plus this entire rectangle over here. So it's going from 4 to 10, so that's 6 times 12. What's 6 times 12? Is that 72? Add it all up. What is that? 96. 96 meters is the displacement for that segment. All right, this is pretty straightforward stuff uh you know in the regular high school curriculum you probably won't be asked to do all of this probably have to do just parts of this but certainly nothing wrong with learning how to do it all because you're going to have to eventually do all of it in some capacity anyhow cool that'll be it for this problem let's move on to the next one i'm going to erase the board all right here we go i got the other problem set up um let me walk you through what i got here here's the problem over here Graph below over here shows the displacement graph for a particle for five seconds. Actually, it looks like it's going six seconds, huh? Well, okay. Typo. It's all the way to the sixth, sixth second. And uh, we all we got to do is draw the corresponding velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. So I kind of put these in here. We just got to go down the line as we do it. Uh, we're going to attack the velocity time graph first. That's going to be the bulk of our work. I'm going to graph it, and then we'll address the acceleration time graph after. So to do this problem, remember, for a position time graph, the slope represents velocity. So what I encourage you to do is recognize that there's one, two, three, four different spots of constant slope. Find the slope for each of those spots, and that'll be the velocity during those segments. So for example, I'm going to find the velocity from time equals zero to time two. And that will be the slope of my position time graph. And so it will be my change in distance over my change in time. So my change in displacement is going to be 3 meters over 2 seconds. I'm going to find out during that segment. Can I squeeze that in there? Yeah, I can. 2 divided by 3 is 1.5, right? Or <laughs> 3 divided by 2. 1.5 meters per second. Probably should have dropped that in line, but that is all right. Positive. Positive slope and final minus initial 3 minus 0 makes positive 3. Now I'm going to do segment. Looks like this is just from this whole steep slope is from segment 2. Or from time 2 to time 3. So I'm going to say T2 to T3, my slope is going to be the change in displacement during that period of time, divided by the time, of course. Final minus initial, so we're finishing at negative three. I'm gonna write this one out. So negative three meters minus my initial value, which is positive three meters, all over the change in time, one second. So negative three minus three is negative six. We're dealing with ne negative six divided by one, of course, meters per second. That makes sense. We can analyze a few things here. We see that it's definitely a negative slope, and that slope is significantly more steep than the first segment, so it should be a greater value. Awesome. Now let's look at segment uh, three to five. You'll notice here that the position isn't changing, which means the object isn't going anywhere, which means 
the velocity zero. And you can tell the velocity zero just by looking at the slope. There's zero slope there. It's a horizontal line. So from t equals 3 to t equals 5, the slope equals 0. So the velocity is 0. Gnarly. And last bit is that segment uh, t6, or t5 to t6. Uh -huh. And we're looking at a scenario where we're going from, again, final minus initial. I only read it out slope. It's change in displacement over time. My final displacement's negative two. So negative two meters minus my initial displacement of negative three. So minus negative three means plus three. And that is indeed just one second. Or er, yeah, that's just one second. So negative two plus three gets us to positive one, one divided by one. We're looking at one meter per second velocity during that final segment. Now that I know the values, I'm gonna draw the value corresponding to it in the velocity time graph. And something to recognize, this is everywhere where we have a straight line is constant velocity. So every one of these is dealing with constant velocity. So we're just looking at, well, you'll see, you probably already know. So during the first two seconds, we were traveling 1.5 meters per second. So during the first two seconds, we were traveling 1.5 meters per second. So it's just a nice horizontal line because it's got to have constant velocity. The velocity can't change. During the next second, we were at negative 6 meters per second. And of course, eh, look at what I did here. I didn't give myself enough room. Err, right? That's frustrating. Well, I guess I can change these to two, four, six. And that would put this blue line down here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Sorry about that, if you already wrote this at home. I'm gonna change these. This is two, four, and six. This is negative two, negative four, and negative six. Eh, that's frustrating. So really this first segment 1.5 is right about here. I'm estimating here for two seconds. I should have done this. Then the negative 6 from 2 to 3 is way down here. So this, we have a gap, we have a break. And then 5 to 6 seconds, or no, I'm sorry, from 3 to 5 seconds, we have zero slope. So we're going to do this. And then from 5 to 6 seconds, we have 1 meter per second. So that's right about here. It's kind of ugly. If I were to have done this again, I'd expand this axis out a little bit more. So you can see that these are not all in the same space. I think it's still showing up okay. The acceleration time graph is a little wonky because we're dealing with like a very brief instantaneous acceleration at the points where the slopes are changing. Very brief instantaneous acceleration. So from here to here, we had like a, something must have jarred it to move it. Uh, from here to here, something briefly impacted it. And again, here and here. So we could calculate that acceleration as it approaches zero. But that's some math that we don't really have to do in the intro level. Intro level. Uh, high school physics courses. So it's relatively appropriate to say there's zero acceleration everywhere. Like this segment, no slope, so definitely zero acceleration. Z it, you know, we're going to have zero acceleration all the way to six, but you might have a little point, a little gap at these spots as you approach zero. But if we were to be taking our basic math that we uh, should know, there's technically no time here, so anything divided by zero is going to be improbable, very difficult to solve for, right? So we're going to ignore those breaks. This is my acceleration time graph. There was no true acceleration acting on it for a prolonged period of time. All right, I hope these two example problems helped. Uh, obviously, you are encouraged to practice, practice, practice as many as possible, so use your resources. Cool, that's it. Thank you.